Hey all, it's Nim or Nimicree if you're feeling professional, and welcome to the YouTube video. Now today we're going to be talking about how Blizzard responding to Season 2 Mythic Plus affixes the changes. It's going to be good. It's going to be better. They're listening. This is literally breaking news as this video is being recorded 49 minutes after this article is released. I literally just drove home and got this for you guys. So I hope you enjoy the video. Throw it a like, and you know, it would really help if you subscribe to the channel as we're trying to climb higher and higher in those rankings and eventually turn this into somewhat of a profitable endeavor. But without further ado, let's get started. When it comes to World of Warcraft's content cycle, at least for the seasonal type of content, there's raiding, PvP, and Mythic Plus. Normally, Blizzard makes their decisions and pushes them out. The fact that they responded to the community concerns and feedback so fast tells me they're listening, and that is wonderful, because before... We would propose things in forums and it would be cricket noise, cricket noise, cricket noise. And like, what happened? And then it's pushed out. We're like, well, I guess, you know, the devs don't care. And obviously the devs care. For some reason, something didn't get implemented or something wasn't explained. So the fact they're being more communica communicative now is important. I just want to keep that in mind, highlight, because I don't know what the changes are going to be here. So I want to make sure that... You know, we at least give them credit for trying, even if it's something I may not necessarily like. So, good on you for listening, Blizzard. Let's discuss this. So, as we can see, Blizzard responded to the Season 2 Mythic Plus affix feedback and noted some upcoming changes, especially to the brand new affixes. All right, we like it. So, in a, in a, po in a blue post, probably by Kyvax. Greetings. We've been watching everyone play Mythic Plus on the PTR and monitoring feedback, and we wanted to take a moment to share some thoughts on where things are at. Overall, we're seeing a lot of the type of gameplay we'd hope to see from our updated level 7 affixes, but we also see room to improve and are looking to make a number of changes for our next round of testing based on player feedback. Perfect. It says, we see you, we heard you, because of those two things, we're doing X. Great. It makes players feel important. It makes it seem like, oh, I'm not just screaming into a void. But, maybe you are at some point, who knows, it's, it's fine. It's nice because this game is a live service, meaning the devs do stuff, the players do stuff, and you both have to react in kind. This game's been going on for almost 20 years. So, you know, it's good to, good to have, a, have a nice, healthy relationship, let's say. So first off, Afflicted now has less health and more consistent spawn behavior. The Afflicted affix was meant to incentivize a greater focus on Dispel Utility while also offering players with healing spells an alternative solution in cases where Dispel availability is more limited or where other enemies have threatening Dispellable abilities. This is mostly working out, but their health, especially at higher level keys, is a bit too high for healing to feel like a practical option. Okay, that is a real thing, because the Afflicted would have all of these statuses, and if you healed them to full, or if you removed any one of their debuffs, they would go away. But if you didn't do it within a certain time, it would reach player, and bam, you get a huge, huge problem. I believe it was 100% haste nerf on the PTR. And listen, as a paladin, if you harm my haste, we're fighting. We're, we're absolutely fighting. I need you to look at me. We're fighting over that. I need my haste. I need more haste, actually. I, I, I actually want more haste. Please, please give me more haste. The fact, though, that it's any ability, any, any, any dispel works. So your paladins, you know, you can cleanse, you can do a whole bunch of things. And the fact that it can be healed is useful because what if I do like a, you know, a cheeky lay on hands or something? Mm, boom, and that can, save, that can save the whole party. So I'm very happy about that. The fact that they realized, uh, the health might not be viable. They're tuning that down. Love it. Love to see it. Love to hear it. And the fact they said more consistent spawn behavior means to me that they weren't spawning at the rate they were required to. Now, they didn't mention exactly where that was, and, and what number, if it was too high, too low, or if there was like, okay, nothing, 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 and then BAM, a whole bunch. And then nothing, 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 and BAM, a whole bunch. We don't know. But, I think that, you know, something a little bit more consistent, because once it's consistent, you can plan for it. Once you can plan for it, you can play around it. And that's the idea of Mythic Plus, is you have these circumstances to overcome, play around them. Now we have Incorporeal. Incorporeal is now immune to damage and has more consistent spawn behavior. Ooh, that's a big one, because if you can kill something, well, then it doesn't really make... This is not a problem. It's like, oh, wow, that's going to be a real problem if that thing goes to the well and poisons it. Good. Axe. <laughs> now it's not a problem. It's just, it's just laying there. No more poison. We can, we're all great. It's, let's all go have a picnic. 
So the incorporeal affix plays a similar role to afflicted, but with an emphasis on crowd control utility. A few things we're hoping to smooth out include both the rate at which these spawn, sometimes too many at once. Okay, so there it is. So I think that's when they talk about the consistent spawn behavior is too many at once. And the ease at which crowd control can be accidentally broken once applied. That is important because here's the thing. If I do, let's say, blinding flash, boom, then what happens? With blinding flash, if someone decides to break something, do extra damage to, to break that CC or a psychic scream, well, then what happens? Now they're no longer CC'd. So make if you have to make it where you have to hard target it and cleave doesn't break, that would be perfect. Or maybe it's, you know, you need a 200% damage. that like, You take 100% of the damage that would break it and you double it for passive cleave. I, I don't know. I'm not, obviously I'm not a game dev. I'm just giving ideas here. And, of course, we are discussing a change to incorporeal beings that would cause them to fade away when combat with non-incorporeal beings has ended. So, okay, that's good. The idea is they're only there for combat. Maybe a second or two afterwards is fine. Think of the imps, uh, Talia frame, Taliax Framely, frame, Flame Wreath. There we go. Those demon names are hard to say. In Court of Stars, the second boss. You know, she'll summon the imps, and then after you kill her while imps are out, they still are around for a few seconds. It's fine. Here we have explosive now has less health and more consistent spawn behavior. We've heard feedback that both explosives in their new form have too much health. Yes. 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 And that in general, it makes sense to try to ignore them, thus making it a healer problem in a different way than before. I, I love that they use the community's terminology, right? It's a healer problem. Explosive. The, the joke, of course being that we, there was a 28 Court of Stars done over the weekend, and it was one tank and four DPS, but there was explosive. So if there was no healer, who did damage on the explosives? There's no healer. It's a healer job, right? Let's move over here a little bit. Anyways, so I just, I, I think that's funny. We are discussing a redesign for the explosive fix to shift responsibility away from the healers. Uh, break for applause for the healers. The proposed change would call explosives to instead shield creatures for a percentage of the explosives remaining health when the cast completes. Oh, man. That would be so good. Oh, oh, listen, that would be so good. So right now, the way explosive works is it blows up, we take damage, and as you get in higher keys, fatal damage. If you're going to give the explosive a bunch of health, then now, if we don't, if if you have enough DPS, you can just be like, ah, right, whatever, ignore it, let's burn it down, or passively cleave onto it. And I don't think you can passively cleave onto explosives in this season. You might be able, you can cleave off them. So when I say cleave, is let's say I have an AOE ability, right, that I have to target somebody and it hits everything in a ten yard radius. Uh, I can, I can't hit if I'm targeting X mob, but not explosive orb. I can't hit explosive orb with AOE attack, but. If I'm targeting Explosive Orb, I can hit X Mob. And they do that to prevent you having to AoE spam and just deleting the effects, essentially. Now we're down to Entangling. We're keeping an eye on the potency of the snare and response required from players to successfully snap the vine with movement. So good. It's not a root. I was worried originally that it was a root because if you're rooted in a, in a frontal slam or a cone and you're not a tank, well, uh, goodbye. You're done. You're smashed. Well, we're looking to improve visual clarity and audio cues for the entangling effects. That is perfect. One of the reasons why DBM is so good in World of Warcraft or Big Wigs or other boss mods is because it can give you audio cues for when you're in danger. So, you know, shockwave, puddle, move, stack, things like that. And more visual clarity and audio cues with the entangling fix is fantastic. And we have keystone affixes. So here we have, in addition to the above, we're also we're also discussing a change to the progression of affixes on keystones with item rewards now increasing up to level 20. We're evaluating at which levels affixes are added to our keystones. Our proposed change would delay the affixes when added to keystones. This is to give players more time to acclimate to the baseline dungeons before additional mechanics come online and to better match the complexity of Mythic Plus Dungeon, the rewards it offers. So right now, keystones would gain their second affix at level 7, up from level 4. So, Spiteful, Raging, Bursting, Bolstering, Sanguine. Spiteful spawns little, what we like to call, hater shades. And they're not Kanye West sunglasses. They're just little shades that go around and follow you. Raging, uh, once you reach, I believe, 20% health, 
they do 30% more damage. Uh, it's either 30 or 50% more damage until um, they're dead. Bursting, when they die, they leave a dot that does a percentage of your health that stacks up for 4 seconds. Bolstering, when they die, they, they strengthen an enemy around them. Sanguine leaves a little pool of damage around there that damages you and heals an enemy. You need to pull them out of it. And then, of course, we have our next keystone level. Keystones will gain their third affix at level 14, up from level 7. Of course, uh, Afflicted, we went over. Incorporeal went over. Explosive went over. Entangling went over. And Storming just has uh, little tornadoes that come around. you got to avoid them, or they get, you take damage and get knocked up. Now, right now, there are four affixes currently. You have your three, your three basic that rotate, and your seasonal. The seasonal being thundering. There's not going to be a seasonal affix for, for season two. And I think that's important because this allows them to really take time to kind of nail this down. Because with all of the number scaling and gear increasing and new abilities, you can end up with some really wacky interaction. And I think WoW wants to avoid wacky interaction if at all possible. Of course, uh, ending, thank you again for taking time to play Myth Plus on the PTR. We appreciate your feedback, and we'll continue to read, watch, play, and let you know when we make additional changes. Perfect. Again, great answer. Like, we are listening to feedback, and based on how fast these changes came, I believe they are listening to feedback. So let's wrap up this video. I'll give you my thoughts, and uh, we can get back to playing our video games, and I need to do some homework. Overall, this was a good video to make. I'm glad that I can make good news videos about WoW. I know, I was surprised too, because a lot of the stuff I see is all clickbait, this is terrible, everything's dying, and it's like, no, this is a good thing. They heard feedback, they acted on feedback, they explained why feedback was acted upon. I'm looking forward to more of that going forward, because Dragonflight added respectability back to World of Warcraft. Now, Blizzard has its issues, I'm not saying that it doesn't, believe me, I am aware of them, but... This is a good thing. This is a genuinely good change. So right now, I want to take the time to thank my patrons. They're the ones that help make these videos possible, and also add a little extra support and pep in my step for when I'm feeling down. So thank you to them. Their names will be on the screen now, and it's no word count. Tyro Talks, Panther Dragon 99 Mosquito Fly, and Gamer Spam Live. If you'd like to join that list and gain a few benefits, some of which are actually pretty interesting, you can go to patreon.com slash nimicry. Again, that's patreon.com slash nimicry. You can follow me at the Discord. There'll be a link down below, in addition to my Twitter and other social media handles. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.